just wanted to thank everybody for coming out here and getting together. I know our schedules, you know, we're all pretty <laughs> busy and, and uh, it's hard to get, you know, a collaboration like this and get us all going. But I really just wanted to get us all together and, and talk about this project that we're working on right now. There's some funny stuff that happens in this industry that I really like to get on camera that nobody ever sees, right? <laughs> I think we, we launch these big products and we, we coordinate everything for years, you know, and everybody sees this very like tuned content and all these cool pictures and videos, but they never see like the hard work that goes into it beforehand. And so that's why I kind of really wanted to get us together and talk about this PDP F series project it, because it was kind of a funny stories that led up to the, even the idea of it. And then once we got into that idea, just all the work that, that was involved and all the different people kind of telling us, oh, you should be cautious of that. Right. <laughs> right, and just our mentality of, no, we're staying focused on what our goal is. So Gabby, uh, this all kind of really started, I think, with one of your classes that you helped us out with, right? Where was this at? There was, uh, I was training the troopers, the female troopers in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm a great group of ladies and they were shooting this 45 caliber handguns and they were handling the guns but you could tell that it could have been better yeah. and uh and when you know after all that and you call me up like a few months later and you showed me this frame i'm like oh my goodness this is the holy grail yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, in the farm industry. I mean, I didn't know how you guys even got to that point. Yeah. You know, not only the frame itself, but being able to kind of translate it to uh, merge different firearms like PDP and this mm. one. So, yeah. Yeah. And I remember, I remember talking to you after that event where you went out and you had, right, all female law enforcement officers. Right. right? They're handed this. 45 caliber gun, full size gun, double action only, tough to shoot, especially for new shooters. Right. Right. And, and they're trying to make their qualifications and do all this. And we've all been in that position, right? Where we, we've all bought multiple guns, oh, right? Yes. Whether right. Walter or not, we start off, you know, oh, yes. we, we go through all the processes <laughs> of trying to pick what we like. Right. It's a difficult process. And we yes. know when a gun doesn't fit us, you see it, right? Mm -hmm. You see it down range on your targets. You feel it in your hand, you, you know. And even right? your confidence. Oh, exactly. Yeah. exactly. It, it yep. shatters your confidence in so many Absolutely. different ways, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. So when we look at our law enforcement officers and we tell them, hey, you get your own cut uniform, you get your women's cut uniform, you get your own cut body armor that's cut to you, you get belt sized for you, you get shoes, you get right. everything yeah. going for you. And then they're like, oh, yeah, this gun here, <laughs> this is this is exactly. what you're going to defend your life with, right? Mm -hmm. It just didn't make sense. And, right. and I remember having those discussions like, why the, Why doesn't anything exist for this? Exactly. We looked at where the industry was at, right? And everything, we, we have the, what was the term? Shrink it and pink it? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. You know, it's an unfortunate but true. It is, yeah. It and, is. I, you know, we we do it too. We have P22, PK3, all these different colored right. guns. And they, they sell well, right? Which is, you know, from a company standpoint, you're like, this is great. Right. But from a shooter's perspective, what do we need? What does our law enforcement need? What do the United States citizens need as we're, you know, more and more, what, almost 4 million new gun buyers last year and a large percentage of those females? Right. 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 We see all three of you out there training nonstop, countless. How many classes a year do you teach, Tatiana? Over 300 events by the time the year is out. And it, yep. that's just absurd. You know, yeah. you have to see my kids once in a while. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's not what I look like. What percentage of those classes do you teach females, women? Yeah. I'd say 60% yeah. is populated by females. Exactly. And they, are, they come from all spectrums and walks of life yeah. and to the point of confidence right. and correct mm -hmm. fit right. and application. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you're walking into a retail venue, you don't know what you don't know. And yeah. you're hoping that the person you're working with is benevolent and, exactly. and loves you enough to right. fit you with right. the right tool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm finding that the trend is is getting more and more towards actually helping the individual mm. and less towards just pushing something that is right. kind of prepackaged right. for a chick. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so that's a great trend. But there, even then, the options tend to be a little undersized. Right. Yeah. So we'll do programs through a girl and a gun, and then at classes all over the place. We'll do battlefield pickup in classes, mm -hmm. so that everyone can try out different pieces of equipment. Yeah. And most of the time, those folks who've come with a very, very tiny solution end up realizing, particularly women, that they right. just needed a big girl gun this whole time. <laughs> right. you know, yeah. just, exactly. Why didn't someone give and me a big yeah, kid and gun? And that's a lot you know? of thing is like now, more and more women want to train and yeah. want to be better. 
because I think before, you know, I've been caring for a long time, you know, I never went and trained. Mm -hmm. I got a gun, I'm concealing, I'm good to go. You know, but now more and more women want to train and need a gun that and, they could shoot and be comfortable with. And, and they, they realize the that yeah. the training part of it, yeah, exactly. you know, it doesn't not involve just concealing and carry only. Yeah. There are right. other different areas that you have to cover. And training for several, you know, having hundreds of rounds and shooting these tiny guns that exactly. kick a lot. They're right. not very comfortable and not necessarily the best way to train. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and so that's also. Yeah. yeah. So we get into this. So we figure out, right, as Walter, you know, we're all Everybody thinks like we just sit around like a round table and watch your ideas. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. I wish you know it's usually a little, a little bit more of a firefight, you know, of just mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, but we kind of figure out, you know, we're going to do the PDP series. We, we decide that the PPQ is creeping up on ten years old. We know like there's some serious upgrades out there. We're all shooting red dots around the office, so we're like, we need something that is tailored <laughs> around red dots. So, right. you know. We come up with this idea for PDP, and we knew that we needed a full-size frame for that series to tag along with the compact frame. And most other people in the industry and stuff, they, they treat that as like the small frame goes to the women and the large frame for, for bigger guys, right? And we knew that that wasn't the case. I mean, right. I shoot a compact. Um, Chris over here, he shoots full-size. You know, it kind of bounces back and forth. But every time, like, I would train women, like even my, my wife and family members and all this stuff, like I'd, I'd put the compact in their hand, there'd just be this large gap right. underneath the beaver tail. Like they just could not, she could not get high enough up on the gun. And so her recoil was always a little bit more pronounced than it should have been, right? No matter how I kind of tuned her grip or anything, it was like she was fighting against the exactly. gun, which there's a problem right there, yes. right? The, the gun should not hold us back from shooting at all. So. Uh, you know, the first ones, the, the first frame ideas we had, we just took PPQ frames, we, we sanded them down, uh, <laughs> ran all these pins in them to help like pull the trigger back and uh, stippled them in these weird ways just to try to like scallop and tune right. them to kind of what they to might feel right. like, you know. Exactly. And uh, Tatiana, kind of talk about, we, you, you flew down to help us with this, right? I and, did. Uh, kind of talk about your experience there. Well, you never know what you're going to walk into, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. I, you know, I had an affinity for Walters, but I had no idea why you called me there. I just thought, yeah, NDA is this thick and all that this good is, stuff. This is pre-Defense Division. This oh, is before, before that even existed. This is uh -huh. way before that. But you have an opportunity to go meet a manufacturer. You're like, yes, yeah. I'm coming. You know, this is going to be fun. And I'm a manufacturing nerd, so I was all excited to nerd out. So we walk in, and you guys pulled out a couple of different frames and they were mm. all look like looked like a bondoed and it was yeah. it was really it was arts and crafts. Like, what is it? Was yeah, 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 right. Right. Get the you know, going. Exactly. <laughs> they were colorful. <laughs> but you close you pick the you pick it up and you close your eyes and you're like, oh right. huh. Here's what's making sense. Mm -hmm. And the fit and fill of your hand around the machine is kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. The reach to certain components is a big deal. And women don't typically have hands that are too much smaller than a man's hands. I mean, yeah. just quarter of an inch yep. is typically with the realm of spectrum, but it's enough where we feel like we have T-Rex arms, thumbs, <laughs> and we can't reach yeah. things, you know, exactly. just yeah. enough to throw us off just that hair yep. yeah. that makes our interface with it a problem. So as we were working across the different bondoed up super fancy little models, it became very evident that a lot of those features were no longer a concern. Mm -hmm. And it's bizarre to not have the problems you've learned to live with. Yeah, right. it is to not have to. It is. Yeah. It's about. really. Like, oh, it's kind oh. of disarming at first. You're like, why does this That's hurt anymore? Different. That's you know? exactly. <laughs> we were, yeah, we were both going over there playing. We're like, uh, and then we just kept looking at you, and she's like, it feels like I, I'm just used to like trying so hard, and it's like, Boop, I can't reach the trigger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, it was just yeah. crazy. Yeah. And that's something like when we were trying to, to like go back and forth and we had these multiple frame sizes and stuff like that. And, y you know, we, we know that that stuff can affect you downrange. You know, you look Absolutely. at, look at all, look at Chris and I's gun. We're always tuning and trying to, you know, different triggers and optics and <laughs> oh, all yeah. that, right? You oh, know, yeah. and it's all to try to figure out how we do better downrange, you know, and right. I, I don't think like women shooters have had that opportunity. Right? And I you look so. at it and it's like, here's your gun. Because we're always fighting, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, fighting it's like, too. No. Generally, the size goes, uh, like you're saying, mm -hmm. size in everything. Right. Yep. If they say w women need a smaller gun, let's put everything, make right. everything yeah. smaller. <laughs> yeah, right. Right? Uh, but never thought about creating a gun that is actually 
size full size yeah. gun right. yeah. but it can fit it can exactly. feel comfortable and, and and it's actually designed for women and yeah. that's it's, phenomenal i will yeah, say like the the ergonomics when we started looking at like i don't know not a lot of people know but we make olympic guns right we were in the even the last uh, olympics and you know, gold medal <laughs> I, 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 I know shot, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I shot a GSP Walther mm -hmm. 22 caliber, and uh, to me it's like a nostalgia thing. That I know, that's the first thing I tell people. Yeah. Most people don't know that Walther guns, the quality that comes from that background, Olympic shooting, the triggers, yeah. if somebody knows how to make triggers, <laughs> it's Walther. Yeah, right. and th this is a funny little side story here, back right? when Gabby and I were talking about you joining the Walther team and stuff. Like it always just felt like it was a right fit, you know. This is like what, three or four years yeah, ago. Yeah, it's like that. been a um, while. Yeah, it, I remember you sending me pictures from the Venezuelan newspaper of you like, you know, on the front page shooting for the you know the Olympic team yeah. and their big old Walther, you know, Olympic pistol right there on the front of it. Right. So, uh, really cool. Just kind of go full circle like that. And yeah. but we really, when you look at those guns. How customizable are those guns, right? You can right. get the grips. I mean, we have hundreds of different yes. grip contours and things that fit everybody because they know from a precision standpoint that has to be perfect for their hand. The right? trigger, the trigger yeah. can adjust, you know, different ways, up, down, yep. back, forward. So like I'm saying, it's, it's just, yeah. I knew the quality is there, but the best part of the ingenuity. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. and, and we knew kind of from that because there's a lot of research that goes into like how a gun points and the, those mold structures and stuff mm -hmm. like that and so we we were able to use a lot of that research from that olympic background and put it into this f-series because we knew from that side of it that the males and females that are shooting in the olympics have different grips right right, right. you don't go hey here's one grip that fits all of you exactly. right that's not what happens and so we were able to like all right the bone structure is different, right? You may have a small hand, right? But the meat that is in between right. the thumb and that exactly. forefinger, on a guy, we have yep. a lot more there. So we're able to fill that back strap in a little better. Right. right. And so when you take a gun that's designed for that and you hand it to somebody that does not have that, mm -hmm. there's always that gap under the beaver tail. So right. we're like, all right, we got to fix that. That's, that's day one, right? That's recoil control through and through. Mm -hmm. right. We have to have that and fix it. And to yeah. be a little bit more concerned about what, you, what mm -hmm. you're saying, the grips generally come standard, but the difference is in Olympic gun grips is that we can adjust them. Uh -huh. We can put sandpaper, we can add material, we can reduce material, but something that we don't have. Yeah. And a really regular guns. What right. you what you get is that's it, <laughs> yeah. basically. One or two. And yeah. so that's that's very yeah. good that you guys did it from the get go. Yeah, and that was a was a weird thing. So we had to change the grip angle of the gun uh, quite a bit, but we knew we had to like still like <laughs> I could. Walter could not come out with this new gun and be like, all right, yay, it's part of the PDP line. It's a duty gun, but it takes its own magazines proprietary magazine. <laughs> Don't we hate that word? No shooters uh -huh. proprietary. You know, right. you're like, oh, you know, that hurts my pocketbook, right? Right. Because <laughs> you know, it's all new mags. And, like how many right. magazines have yeah. to have for each gun? Exactly. You know, it's a, you, you, you get quite a bit. And so we knew that we had to work within those parameters. You know, we were able to kind of find that perfect grip angle that's changed that drives your hand up to fill in that beaver tail, but still maintain that PDP, PBQ magazine compatibility. Mm -hmm. So now when we look at it from a family standpoint, and this is one of my big things is like, as I buy guns for my family and stuff, I don't, when we go to the range, I do not want there to be 13 different types of magazines out right. there that we're all trying to use. Like it's, it's just nice, right? It's a right. nice feature to be like, we get to share magazines. Right. We get to share holsters. You know, exactly. I can, Which means it doesn't matter if I'm shooting in competition my PDP yep. or my PPQ, right. Q5 steel frame, yep. I won't confuse magazine. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, exactly. It's a situation too. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, one family member has certain type of, and then, you know, in the heat of the moment, you're like, ugh, bumbling. You don't want that. Yeah, so. exactly. I mean, there's countless right. things. It's just, it's just a pure benefit. There is no, Absolutely. I don't, you know, I, I really don't see there any being downfalls to <laughs> the mag compatibility right. yeah. side of it. And, uh, but yeah, that was a, that was a big thing for us. It's just like a family gun, right? Like I'm shooting a, a PDP compact, you know, um, other family members like full size, you know, a wife, she'll like the, the F series gun, mm -hmm. you know, but it's all, like I said, holster compatibility, yes. uh, optic plates, the, the magazine, like that is just a, a nice feature that just kind of helps 
the whole family of the guns and your own family at the same time. Right. So, um, but with the grip circumference, that yeah. I think that's one of the big things that uh, we get hung up on a lot too, especially with the new micro compact phrase, right? Like everybody wants a micro compact because it's it's thin, it's small, it hides. There's a great purpose for them, and, and we need them. But from a performance standpoint, when we're out on the range and we're pushing our draw times, or we're pushing our split times, and you know, just pushing the boundaries on what we can do as shooters, they fall behind, right? I mean, Chris, I mean, you can comment on this a little bit, like you know. This yeah, is... there's definitely a performance ceiling that you can hit with a gun that's too small, mm -hmm. and I I don't know if you guys would agree from the competition yeah. side. There's mm -hmm. there's a ceiling exactly. that you would hit if the gun was too big. Uh, right. Conversely, so. Oh, yeah. Um, do you find that when you held the F series that that was something that you feel like a door was kind of open in the performance realm because you're starting with a gun that is more fit for your hand or, uh, yeah. you know, you've got controls that are more easily reachable. Yeah. We're hoping to open the door on your performance, I guess, a little bit that way and raise that ceiling even yeah. higher. Well, yeah. the f I mean, you can look at every sport, you know, baseball, tennis, you know, we all f trying to find the perfect grip, exactly. find the perfect balance, and shooting is no different. Yeah. You know, so having the opportunity for us women that we can, first of all, as soon as you get the gun, you can reach a trigger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a win. And that's Just the right thing. there. Right. It's yeah. a win. Yeah. To give you an example, in competition, exactly. we go, uh, we shoot strong hand, weak hand. One of big struggles when you go strong hand, trying to reach a trigger or a weak hand, exactly. that you cannot have the perfect grip. Mm -hmm. right. Or a bad grip for me, just slightly a bad grip because I start in surrender position or whatever, or oh, because it happens, mm -hmm. that I get a bad grip just slightly. Right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It, you don't have to readjust so much. Yeah. yeah. And this gun is just, you know, I adjusted a little bit and still could reach a trigger. Yeah. And that's and how that's I, phenomenal. yeah, and that's how I pick my gun when I, like, nope, nope. And they're like, you're not gonna shoot it? No, I gotta find the right grip first. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, ooh, I didn't know Walter made a competition gun. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, and That's huge for us. Like yeah. It's huge. And I do have right. Tiny Hunt. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, and you, you talk about this a little bit. As, that kind of leads us into the trigger, the trigger reach, trying to shorten that distance up, which is not, like we're known, right? The PDP is like a great trigger, probably the best striker fired trigger out of the box. Yeah, out and of so the box, yes. We're held to that standard, right? If we're going to have this gun that's part of the PDP family and it's a duty gun and it's the right gun for civilian defense, all this stuff, you got to have a great trigger. So sorry, we got the grip, we know we got that, we've done the research behind it, got the approvals right uh, <laughs> yeah. of our team and the trigger. And, and we knew that we had to have a lot of new technology on the inside, but we still had to hold that standard of having the best striker fired trigger on the market and reducing that and still being like drop safe. You know, that, that is a huge thing right. that a lot of people exactly. have failed at, right? Um, and so we're really excited to have this like this feature and you know, you can kind of talk about this a little bit because I've seen a lot of your training videos where, I don't know if people know, you're, like, you're three gunner, you do defensive <laughs> training, you do everything, everything right? IDPA, yeah. You know, yeah I, I shot IDPA with PPS and they're like, why? I'm like, because I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so well. And they're like, okay, you do you. So <laughs> one of my favorite videos, and I, I didn't realize this until I became a parent, but was the whole idea of having to draw a gun one-handed right while holding something maybe your child right yeah <laughs> you know and i saw that video of you like yeah, yeah of the like the, the toy trees, child right, right holding it yeah. and, and practicing uh that that stuck with me as a as yeah. a parent i was like oh my god that's I, i've never practiced that well, and i find myself at walmart right. you know i'm like all right you know like what do i do well, right well that, that kind of video came up with because my uh a good friend neighbor has told me she said you know, like I have a child, how do I carry? And and she said, what am I gonna do with my child? You know, it's something, I mean, I only have a few seconds. I'm like, hmm, I'm gonna have to like figure this yeah. out because I don't have any children. So mm -hmm. like, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. And so I was practicing and like, you know, if you find the right gun, you could do everything with one hand. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I came up with that video, so. Yeah, because if you yeah. draw and you're drawing one hand. And it's one comfortable and yeah. it fits and it just fits right and stable. You know? Yeah. So. And you could talk about because you've seen people, right, Tatiana, as we go out and they, they draw and they go, because you do a lot of the, the compass drills, the things like that yep. as we're shooting strong hand or some of our other guys, strong, other strong hand. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but we've all seen the person that, that comes out and like they get on the side of that trigger 
right? They don't engage the trigger blade safety, yep. and they're just like, right. you see them right. like fighting that trigger. That happens out on the range when Absolutely. a gun doesn't fit right a lot right. of times too, you know? So trying to apply that to a defensive scenario, I mean, how quick can people cover ground? Y you know, like you do a lot of these drills, right? Of just trying to like the timing based stuff of getting the gun out, trying to get strong hand, weak hand shots, all that stuff. Well, I think a great example is I was spending some time on the range with Scott mm -hmm. Jedlinski, another member of the defense yep. division, and he teaches a specific type of grip at the holster from concealment. I could not, I couldn't do mm -hmm. it. And it's pissing me off. I'm sorry, I was so mad. I was like, I love Scott. He's brilliant. How come I cannot make this thing work? And it came down to the things you described. Mm -hmm. And I love the I love the PDP. I have no problem working with the mm -hmm. PDP, but utilizing that technique, I could not, I did not have the mass in my hand, the meat right. in my palm. Mm -hmm. And so what he was able to, and all the rest of the guys in the event were able to do, I was like, I can't literally cannot do right. it. Yeah. So the difference is with the same technique in the right fit, mm -hmm. it's a non-issue. And now I'm able to perform right. to that standard and yeah. keep up and do the exact same things because I'm not overcoming the deficits, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I don't have the holes in the, my grip. I don't have the gap happening, which yeah. doesn't lead to a compromised presentation, right. et cetera, et cetera. And that is, it's a deal breaker. If you can put a shooter who's a good shooter in the right fitting gun, they become a great shooter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got to match the person to the equipment. So. When we see that, like trying to become a better shooter, I always see like these pistols and this defensive mindset as an equalizer of people, right? It's a direct correlation of how much you train at the range. And it doesn't matter. I I've seen big old overweight guys that win competitions that are supposed to be based on speed, but they're not the fastest person. Right. You know, um, I've seen, you know, accurate shooters that you know, say you need to take all the time in the world to be accurate, but they shoot a, you know, a 100 score on a B8 in less than 10 seconds from a holster, you know? So, I mean, Chris, talk, you're in this realm, right? I don't know if a whole lot of people know, but the inventor of the Vice Car Challenge, right? All right. right? Yeah. You like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, body no, 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 no. Right. Yeah, thanks very much. 1.38 seconds, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a fun project. Um, but my thing is enthusiast level shooters. Uh, that's what I care about, and that's what I care about growing with Walther. Um, to open that door to people of all different shapes, sizes, genders, Absolutely. it doesn't matter. Uh, that's a beautiful thing to me, because we want to send people out into the world with their children, with their grandkids, or even among strangers just at a store, confident in the ability of, with their firearm, their chosen firearm. And up until now, those firearms, like you said, were either shrink it and pink right. it firearms, right. which, like I said, there's a performance ceiling with those. You can only shoot so well with those. Um, or an oversized hand, uh, handgun, like you said, you can't necessarily do all the hot new techniques right. or whatever, you have to modify that stuff. So um, I, I guess my heart is in this because it's going to open the door for a lot more shooting yes. enthusiasts. Um, Tatiana, you train a lot of people, you said you do 300 classes mm -hmm. a year. I'm curious from the trigger standpoint, do you find it to be easier to teach people how to shoot better with a quality trigger in there as opposed to something that might be, you know, more common on the market? Is this uh, a trick trigger? question? No. <laughs> well, I'm, just, I'm curious as to your thoughts on it. Like, obviously, I, I imagine that it would be something where the group sizes would decrease, but you see that reflect in their confidence, which then skyrockets yes. them far past that. Uh, the answer is yes, but with a caveat to that. You have to have a compare and contrast. So if you are working with a Walther trigger, a Walther firearm, and that's the only experience you have. We need to compare and contrast that so you can appreciate the quality that you have in the gun that you're learning, right. so that you can really maximize what it can offer you. So exactly. I really do enjoy having students trade guns or move down the yes. line and experience each other's equipment. And this is not a, this is a terrible, this is bad, this is great. Right. It's right. you need the compare and contrast. Absolutely. So when you return to a firearm with a, with a trigger in it, like the Walther triggers, which are gorgeous right out mm -hmm. of the box, I think we can all drool over that in agreement. Yeah. You get back to your own firearm and you're like, oh, okay. And now you realize what you can maximize within it. Exactly. So you dial up the performance on that shooter. Ex learn it, experience it, compare and contrast, and then return to it. Mm -hmm. You get so much more out of it. Right? Yeah. And it's not even necessarily a matter, uh, I don't know if you would agree, but you're not buying skill. You're unlocking an, a level of ability right. uh, and, and mental performance. You know, that's yeah. something I know that mental you're big on, uh, yes. Gabby, as well. So. Well, you know, it's not like uh, a person cannot get to a certain level with a 
fire on whatever mm. big it is. Right. I mean, I really have tiny hands, but it takes a lot of effort. Yep. Right. So what happens when you, instead of put all that effort with a gun that fits perfectly, right. I mean, the maximizing right. your, right. you know, your efforts, it's, it's the yeah, key. That's yep. exactly what I was doing is just once I got better and then it was like, but it's still holding me back. Mm. Especially for new shooters, right. you know, they are getting in the sport and sometimes they get discouraged because they Absolutely. don't see the immediate results. Yep. Right. They say, oh, I cannot reach the trigger. I cannot get the, the right, right grip. Mm -hmm. And it seems like an in, in as an ex myself as an experienced shooter, I know that with draft firing, you can say, okay, in one, two months, you can see results. But for somebody who is in the zero ground, right. they don't have that vision of what right. could happen in one right. or two months. And they just see what they see today, yeah. what is right. happening today. Well, and that's so, another thing is when, you know, when I first got my gun, you know, it was like, why can't you do the, you know, and I'm like, I'm trying, I'm trying to reach that magazine release button, yeah. but I can't do it like you're telling me. Yeah. I have to figure out my own way. And, you know, that's just kind of like a roadblock every time you yeah. try to do something. And so just, having the benefits with the F model that obviously it's going to, it's going to be that bridge. You don't have to worry about right. that. Gonna, right. You're going to, immediately those new shooters are going to just yeah. cross exactly. the bridge. A lot faster. It's like a person only has so much bandwidth, and if they're not having to fight through finding right. the trigger and finding through all that exactly. stuff, that's all stuff they can clear out of their exactly. lane and focus and on then training. Move on, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I think this is something good to point out is what we think is is like great shooting from us, right? And, and what we want to see out of people that get into the F series and shoot and stuff like that. I don't think that's very well known nowadays. Like what can be done with a pistol. Right. I think it's right. it really surprises people, you know, when we get out on the range and, you know, an average draw time from concealments under a second, you know, and exactly. you see multiple shooters down a line be able to do that. That is incredibly impressive. And that's just some of the capabilities there. The accuracy standpoints when we get out to 25 yards. Right. What can we do? And there's multiple shooters that use the PDP that have shot, you know, high 90s and hundreds on VA targets. and competitive shooters that are shooting you know polymer frame guns that aren't supposed to be competitive exactly right, right. but they're <laughs> they're winning mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's all yeah. these like things that i think when you get into guns and you're trying to compare like how good am i getting how good am i getting it, you know and that's something that we wanted to make sure to be part of if we're going to come out with this gun it fits great it shoots great it's all that but the point is, is like, we don't just make the gun and be like, all right, we did our job <laughs> as Walther. We're done with you. Right. <laughs> right. We want to keep you in it. We want to keep you practicing and training because there's a really fun aspect to this industry. Yeah. You know, and I think when you get into it from an outsider's perspective and you, you see all this stuff happen, especially, I think, for women shooters trying to pick their first gun. Absolutely. Right. I just want to hear, we're going to go around here because I imagine, and I have not heard any of these, but I imagine there's some wild stories. I used to work in retail at a gun store and I've heard some wild stuff yeah. of like, you know, we've always got, you've always got the husband, right, that comes in and wants to buy for their wife, which is great. We want to keep everybody carrying and stuff like that. You've got the woman that comes in and wants to buy her own gun and she's influenced by the counter guy. Right. Um, got all these. There are some wild stuff that is sad, right? We don't we don't know like how great of a shooter you are when you walk into a gun store. Well, I used to work right. in a gun shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the most thing I got, even as a salesperson, mm -hmm. that some people didn't even know that I could even rack the slide. Mm -hmm. I could even sell firearms. And I remember there was this gun who was very hard to rack the slide. Mm -hmm. And I have these customers always asking for, you know, uh, give me a gun to conceal and carry, I'll go. And I knew the amount of force I need to apply to to rack the slide, mm -hmm. it'll go like easy, and they'll get the guy. Will, the, the guys will go like, oh, oh, nice. <laughs> okay, lady, I need three more. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let's talk <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Tatiana, I mean, I, I imagine you've heard some. You, you work in retail, also, I do. right? I yeah. do. Uh, my home range, and we have this kind of initiation thing with mm -hmm. the new guys that come in to our crew and they won't tell them who I am, right? I'm the only <laughs> woman on full-time staff there. And I'll walk in, there'll be a new, new, nice, wonderful young man, and I'll walk up and I'll say hello. And I'll say, I'm, I'm from Maine, okay? It's cold, I'm wearing a coat. You can't see the logo. <laughs> you yeah. don't know I work right. there yet. And uh, I'll introduce myself and they'll be like, oh, it's nice to meet you. 
are you looking for something? Because they're trying to impress. You right, know, they're trying right, to impress. Right. And I'm like, well, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, you know, I'm always interested in something. What would you recommend? And this is the first training opportunity because we get to experience what they would try to sell to a female shooter. Right. And what are the questions that are being asked? And I think the biggest deficit is people are asking the women the wrong questions. Absolutely. And those questions that are being asked are often leading questions mm -hmm. that are leading the solution of something small, something pink, something that's small so it's not intimidating, mm -hmm. right? And something aesthetically perhaps a little right, less right. intimidating. And it's also an easier sell because the fear factor comes into play. So, right. you know, a wheel gun, a small itty bitty lightweight wheel gun. <laughs> and I'm like, I drove a car here, man. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure. Yeah can run a giant well, that's dangerous thing, machine yeah, exactly. safely. Like they think, simple, this is simple. All you have to do is point and pull the trigger. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I have heard and that, like, like, point and pull, mm -hmm. point and pull the trigger. You don't think that we could Bury it you know, in his manage. belly and just keep right. it. Yeah. Or yeah. learn how know to do how it. Know how to put this in here. <laughs> I think we can manage that. Yeah, so I, I know they're trying to help, you know, so. Yeah. yeah, we always get back to that. And it's just hard, like when you see like, you know, we're, we're at this enthusiast level, so we're around always a lot of really, really great shooters, you know, but the discerning factor is like out in society, right? Nobody, we're not famous people, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. yeah. People might know you within our rail and our right. gun industry and stuff like that, but people two don't know you and two don't know, like, like I said earlier was, they don't know what a great shooter is right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, our industry is very split up because they come in, especially as pistol shooters. And this is something that uh, we fight all the time. It's like the majority of people, I, I feel like, get into it through like hunting and rifles and shotguns and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So there'll be an amazing shotgun shooter. There'll be an amazing rifle shooter. They can shoot groups 600 yards down there if they want, stuff like that. You put a pistol in their hands and get your story, right. right? And it's hard to educate people with that when they have the mindset of, I'm a great shooter. Right. right. I step into this. This is, this, I know how to pull a trigger, you know, and it's like, what, what do you think can be done with that? Right. You know, and it really, it, it throws people off when you see people, you know, like Gabby running around a USPSA stage, burning it down, you know, and her split times are <laughs> super fast. You know, she run 20 splits and going target to target. And I, I don't think they, they realize that a whole lot. And so I think our industry was just a little bit lacking of like what, what was actually needed out in the field, like when we get out and train and shoot. And we did that with PDP. Like we took this, this aspect, these, these people that were going out and training all the time who cared about the belts and the holsters <laughs> they're running for concealment and right, it hides right. good, but how fast can I get that gun <laughs> right. out, right? It's not about just shoving it all the way in there and it's there, I'm safe because right. I'm carrying a gun on me, that, that, that protects me. There's this whole other realm of shooters oh, yeah. is like, this is on me. Right, but I gotta know how to use it. Exactly. Right. You know, so I'm worried about being able to clear cover and get that gun out. Right. Mm -hmm. How quick can I get it out? There's shot timers, right? right? How that's not a huge industry, you know, and you get, how many, what percentage of shooters do you think even know what a shot timer is? Not much. Gun owners yeah. or shooters, right? right? Yeah. Not many. Yeah, hey, exactly. No, many people even know that shooting is an Olympic sport. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so. I, and I, I will take blame to that too because I, I really didn't know <laughs> I before did I came. You know, I was exactly. like, well, this is, I mean, I wish <laughs> like, I would have known about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's exactly there is a lot about. in the industry that right. is a lot of good things in the industry that yeah. are not known. And yeah. I love what you guys are doing because you're breaching, right. you're trying to reach all those people. Defense, yeah. competition, you, yeah. It's yeah. it's all the same, right? right. Like we, we all separate ourselves. I'm a competitive shooter. I'm a USPSA shooter. I'm an IDPA shooter, right? You know, you've got all this, and, and we laugh. We try to bridge the gap because, I mean, Chris and I, we we'll all go out there in a competition and shoot it from concealment and still be top five. You know, like, you, know you gotta you got to break those boundaries sometimes, which you're always going to have some advantages when you run the gear and stuff right. like that. But. Well, I think even just in doing the creative content for Walther, I've seen a big push in social media, and I, I do think that that community, despite some of its flaws, which can be right. a mm -hmm. little annoying at times, I think by and large, it's a great, it's been a great thing. It's yeah. been right. helpful to reach out to new enthusiast level shooters. Is that something that you guys have seen for women as well? Oh, absolutely, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you know, that's, you know, everybody in that, it's social media. Mm -hmm. And then they see that, and that's kind of how I started, was, you know, I go on YouTube and, I'm like, what are they doing over there? Mm -hmm. But it's just, you know, when you see other females doing things mm -hmm. that you like, I think I could do that. But, you know, it's like a lot of things have been holding me back. 
you know, finding the right gun. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just seeing women and women actually shooting and not carrying just little pink guns, yeah. you know, and yeah. actually, and a lot of people have, you know, come up to me with seeing me on social media, I'm like, where do I start? Yeah. You know, so it's always right gun. And that, that's something like I think. Shoes, shopping for shoes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I, I worked at a gun store years ago and what got me mm -hmm. to get my instructor's license is this gentleman was trying to find his wife a gun. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, we, most I think they have a certain brand that they like and he was trying to push her to that and she yeah. kept going over here. And I worked at the office, not at the sales, and I walked by with, you know, paper and she said, excuse me, excuse me. She started chasing me down. Do you work here? And I said, well, I work in the bag. She's like, what are you carrying? <laughs> I'm like, uh, and I can see him like, mm -mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, babe, come over here. <laughs> like, and he's like, this is what you need to get. And she was like, I don't know. And I said, well, you know, I'm kind of busy. I didn't want to, I could tell by his face, like, yeah, don't, don't do that. Yeah. So, um, I went around and I came back and I'm like, I'm just listening. And he was trying to get her a 45. And oh. then he told the other salesman, he was like, she won't like it. It'll be mine. Ah, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm getting my instructors. I'm going to find out, uh, you know, how to teach women because I've struggled with yeah, that too. Yeah. So it's tough. And how, I mean, we all know, like, I, I think our goal, uh, you know, from a company is like, just provide the easiest solution, like right there right. out of the box. And we shouldn't have to, Right. We want you to spend the time like learning how to shoot and getting into it because we've all, all of us, like I said earlier, like we have bounced around to multiple different platforms trying to figure out what of we course, like. Yeah. My gosh, we probably have crates and crates and crates of holsters that we're trying <laughs> to find and belts and, right. you know, we change just this whole process. We just want to like help people get to that ending result <laughs> right. and focus on Make shooting, yeah. you know, right. because exactly. it is, it's a whole process there and, yeah. it, you know, it's pretty annoying when you start getting into exactly, it. Exactly, you know? yeah. But at the same time, satisfact it is. it's yeah. a lot of satisfaction in yeah. it because you, it's, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah, learn absolutely. which guns you like, you learn that some guns may not fit you, but you really like them yeah. and you shoot them. And then you realize which holsters you like best and yeah. some others don't and some other ways to carry, they're good for you and some others yeah. are done. I, and so. I mean, I think you look at like people's just income and you know, the disposable income part of it, right? right? Of what we, because still at shooting, like it's a defensive and it's a right that we get in the United States, which is all, which is great, right? But there still has to be some income that they can set aside for it. And from a company, like we don't wanna be like, all right, you know, we're gonna take your $650. You might not like it, right. too bad, right? right? And you know, that was a, a reason we did the whole 30 day money back guarantee yeah, thing, right? right. Like, mm -hmm. and we got hit with it during the COVID stuff. Like people bought guns and was like, I just got, you know, fired, right? Because COVID. Right. And they called her like, you know, just send the gun back, man. You get your money back. You know, and it was just a helpful thing in the community. And we've always tried to find just a little annoying things, <laughs> right? That drove us all crazy. <laughs> and just, just an easy, simple solution. It's not, it's yeah. not hurting anything. Trying to push the industry in some better directions because, you know, we we got to move forward as like a community, right? We need better shooters out there, better trained people. Like, right. it just makes. The I say this with better. a better everybody's trained the safer we all are, whether mm. you have a firearm or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, if I, for one reason, I decide, for whatever reason, I'm not caring, I hope the person who's next to me and that is caring knows mm. what they're doing. Yep. They have right. the right equipment and they're familiarized with mm. it. And at the end of the day, that keeps everyone safe. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you all again for coming out. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. This is, this is awesome. Like I said, I, I think- Yeah, we could probably talk all night, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know, this is, this is fun. It's just what we do, yeah. you know, and, and we love it. But, you know, really this whole, this F-Series project is something new. And I think this little round table discussion type of thing yeah, is this good is, because- this is really awesome. Yeah, this has not, yeah. not been done. And I, I really, you know, personally, I, I want to see the rest of the industry do stuff like this because it's just gonna make it that much easier to see people out at competitions competing and out at the range and doing cool challenges, trying to obtain some just astronomical things that you think <laughs> couldn't be done with a pistol, right. you yeah. know? And they can be by multiple people. You know, we, we wanna see more of that. And, and if this, you know, if this project helps push that industry in the right direction, I think we're all doing the right things here. Yeah. So now thank you again for, for coming you. out so and much. doing all the hard work and, it's not hard, cheating guns. Yeah, yeah right. No, I didn't <laughs> That's just that. fine. This is fine, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, no, no, thank y'all again for coming. Thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you.